What is up, everybody? This is week two, or our second podcast with my boy, WT, and myself, Capone. Uh, for those that watched the first one, we got a lot of really, really, really good feedback from it, and I know you guys loved it. And here we are again. We do plan on doing a lot of these. We're going to break down a lot of Gilded Guardians things and all things Gilded Guardians. What's upcoming? What's new? What is? What have we found out in the last week? Um, there was a few AMAs um, this last week and a few podcasts, and, and we got a little bit more information about certain things. And uh, we're just going to kind of break it down. So, yo, WT, how's your week been, man? Super busy. Uh, I know you had a busy week as well, especially over the weekend. You're yeah. absolutely nuts. 13 <laughs> hours? My God. I went to bed at like midnight, and you still went like, I think, another eight hours or so. Yeah. Uh, I had a blast. I played some uh, Goose Goose Duck with you. Yeah. That was the first time I played that. Um, yeah. yeah, a lot happened this week, like you said, with GOG and the AMAs. Uh, we had a fireside chat. There was a Twitter sp- Bases with the uh, Bryson, he's pretty big. Mm-hmm. There's a YouTube video with Nick and the Schiller, and then there was also another uh, side Twitter spaces with a uh, uh, book book resell. I've n- I've never heard of them, but they're pretty big, I guess. And just just a ton of new information and a lot of activity this past week. Yeah, a lot of definitely. Like I said a lot of a lot of podcasts, a lot of uh, news, a lot of information coming out. Um, so I did listen to a few of these for sure. Um, there was a couple notes that I, I, um, I picked up on that. I want to definitely talk about, uh, before we get in there, I just want to apologize for my voice. Like, like, uh, WT was saying, I did a 13 hour, uh, stream on Friday. Uh, we did a subathon and, uh, yeah, we went 13 (laughs) hours, man. I normally don't do that. My voice is a little bit shot, but we're going to wing it. We're going to go through this anyway. We're going to do it. So, uh, you got to excuse my voice. Okay. So there's a few things we learned. Obviously the, the burning mechanics with the heroes, we we already kind of knew about that, uh, that they were going to do that. Um, so that's how they're gonna. I guess that's how they're gonna keep their value, right? Is that what are your thoughts on that? The burning mechanics on, and so what? It's gonna probably take like a few heroes. You burn them together to make a, a you know go rare to epic, epic to legendary kind of thing. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think it's necessary? What, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, from a financial standpoint, I think it's I think it's great that they're putting that in. They're going to bypass mistakes from other games of having too much of something. And the value not being able to go up with mm-hmm. that burn mechanic. And they have two options. You can either do seven. Oh, I can't count. Seven <laughs> arrows, and they can be random and ascend up to the next tier. Mm-hmm. And those seven are gone. Or you can do five of the same. And those five will be gone, but you move up to the next tier. So if you have five rares of the same, you go up to an epic. Or if you have seven random rares, you go up to an epic. Right. Now, the other thing too was there was talk about if you, uh, you know, the, you're talking about Ascension. If you ascend a hero and then it ends up going on the market, there was questions about should it be ascended when you sell it or should it reset? Uh, what are your thoughts? Personally, I'll tell you something. Personally, for myself, I think if you ascend a hero, it should keep that value. You're putting your assets into it to ascend it. It should keep that value. That's what gives it the value. So you should be able to sell it at that. Uh, that's my personal opinion. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah. Uh, boy. When when they were talking about this, I was like, I was like, man, this this is gonna be a hot topic right <laughs> off the bat. I was like, everyone gonna be talking about this, right. and uh, I, I, boy, you know, I can see both sides of the coin. Um, uh, for me, yeah, I'm with you. If, if I'm putting in that time to that character, I want to put it on the market, and whatever I put into it, I want that value to be there to transition to whomever. That being said. I get what Josiah is saying. He wants it to be not a to win. Right. And and kind of they they as devs, they want to force everybody through the experience of the game, which I get. Yeah. I get it. But I agree. man, with all this money tied into this, ooh, you're gonna you're gonna have some salty people, I think, if uh if they go that route. That's that's the thing, and it's a that, that's the thing I, I gotta say too. There's a tough balance because they they keep talking, they keep mentioning. This is a free-to-play game. We don't want it to be pay to win. We want it to be fair for the free-to-play players. But then you have these people. If you've seen people's rosters, if you've seen what people have invested into this, you ha- and it's a tough – when you when it's a game about – when there's play to earn in a game, you have to be able to please your investors but also not put it out of reach for the free-to-play. This is a very tricky balance. Like it's a very – very, very tricky balance, I think, because, you know, like I said, what's the point of investing, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars uh, when you can just do it all kind of for free? I, I know it's like free to or pay to advance, they're calling it, right? So basically you put the money in to help you progress through the game. 
Um, it's a, this is going to be a very tricky line to uh, to balance. Uh, and uh, you know, I hope they do. I, I feel like they can do this, and they will do it. They have the right minds to it uh, to, uh, on the project, but it's going to be very, very tough to balance. I, I see both sides too. I agree. I agree with what you're saying. If you put the time in, you should keep that value. But at the same time, you don't want people to just come into the game, you know, with a, with a few bucks, buy their uh, buy their hero and run through. I, I see. I see. But it's also pay to advance kind of thing. So it's tough. It's a tough balance. Tough balance. So. Okay, I want to talk about uh, so that's the burning mechanics. I want to talk about the, the the raids, the guild raids. So one thing we we learned, I don't know, I learned, I don't know if you, if this was common knowledge, the raids are auto played. The raids are going to be mm-hmm. auto played. Um, I I don't know how I feel about that, man. I think the point of the game is you want to play the game. Um, you know, the fact that everything is auto played, like you know, I, I don't know how I feel about that, man. I want to play it. I want to I want to grab sixteen people. I want to run through a dungeon, work together, work our mechanics together you know work as a group that's what a guild's about to me man you, you you find a guild that you want to play with you group up you run through these dungeons raids if you played mmos in the past you do all these raids to me that's the fun part is you know beating these bosses going through it together figuring out how to do it um what are your thoughts on that what are your thoughts on that well they uh yes they they, they, they what do they call it uh oh man it's some fancy word uh a synchronized synchronized or something like that i know i'm butchering it but so basically <laughs> basically autoplay so yes at the beginning it is going to be autoplay mm-hmm. um down the road they are going to make it a raid style like we're used to and that you're wanting so yes that is coming but out of the gate it's going to be autoplay but i i, I wasn't might have forgotten this but it, they reminded me you're going to be able to go back and watch the video of what happened in the raid so that you can strategize and say, all right, we did well here. We didn't do so well here. So maybe we need to change it up. So mm-hmm. that's going to be a nice feature while we're waiting for the actual raid style where we're all participating. Yeah. And, and there's uh, 16 people. And basically what it is, is like first come first serve, right? So if you sign up, you get in, is that what it is? Yes. And I also believe uh, that they have not given any specific details. You're going to be able to like, if you can't be in the raid, you're going to be able to contribute somehow. I don't know if it's like you you donate potions or you donate materials or something like that. But there's some sort of side mechanic that they've talked about in the past where you can still contribute somewhat and get a little bit out of that raid, even though you're not in it getting the maximum uh, benefits. And also, everyone that's in the raid, they're going to get something. And that it mm-hmm. sounded like from the sounds of it there's going to be like almost like individual rewards or something where you get a little extra, how that looks or works. I have no idea, but it's, it's kind of exciting that that's a possibility. Right. So there's going to be like completion rewards and then individual rewards as well, which is, yeah, I agree. I think it's great. I think it's uh, I think that's really, really, really good. I'm super excited. That's one thing I'm really excited for is the, is the, is the raids, the 16 man raid or, you know, person raid. Um, I love that. Now, let's talk about the market a little bit. I know one of the AMAs I watched, they didn't want to talk about... So the the thing they said is they don't want to say what the heroes do because they're afraid it's going to affect the market, right? That's like one of their biggest fears. You know, to me, it's like, okay, we as as an investor, you should know what you're investing in. You should know what you're investing in. It shouldn't be like, well, we don't want to tell you because it's going to affect the market. It should be, well, this is what the heroes do. What do you think it's worth? Now, that's when the value gets placed in. Okay, well, this hero does this. I mean, there's more value than a hero that would just do this. Or maybe you put it on your personal stuff. I, f- I feel there's more value on this hero. I want to play this hero. I'll buy this hero. And eh, I don't really want to play with that hero. I'm not going to buy that hero. What are your thoughts on not telling the community what the heroes do because they're afraid it's going to affect the market? Um, it's almost like when you, you know, if you go to a, a car shop, you go to a, you go to buy a car, you want to know what's in the car before you buy it. You don't want to buy it and open a box and it's like, a, you know, uh, whatever. You're looking for a Ferrari and you're getting a Camry or something. You know what I mean? Like you want to know what you're buying. Um, so what are your thoughts on that, actually? Uh, I think it's two things. Uh, one, regulations. And I'm pretty sure that they have some uh, high paid lawyers in their court and they're telling them, hey, we don't want to do any of this and open ourselves up to any possible regulations to where it's going to cause us to have to pause the game or do something that's going to disrupt the flow of what they got going on. And the second part is, uh, I really, I, I mean, they've really put their neck on the line here saying over and over again, they do not want this to be uh pay to win. Mm-hmm. So I think they're trying to give everybody the most equal shot when the, when the gates are open and everybody's running, they want to give everybody the most uh, equity or equitable pants to everybody start at zero and not have any foreknowledge. And I think that's part of it as well. 
Yeah, I, I 100%. They've said it over and over. And if you listen to the AMAs, you listen closely, the amount of times they say this is a free-to-play game, they say it very slow every time. This is free-to-play. We want it to be free-to-play. We want free-to-play players. So they're, they're very, very adamant on that. So I don't think there's going to be any – I think some people may be surprised uh, when it comes out. But if you listen very closely, they keep saying this is a free-to-play game. We want free to play players because they're looking at what they want, and you you hear them. They're talking about fifty million viewers. Users, <laughs> they want volume. They want volume, right? So that's why they keep saying oh, yeah. free to play. They want people downloading the game. They want people right. playing the game. So they keep saying free to play. So uh, that's one thing I keep I keep um, focusing on when uh, when they're talking. They, they're very very adamant. Free to play. They say it very 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 many times. So. Um, yeah, so that's that's one of the things. So, for, so that's another thing too. So, so these founder heroes, uh, basically, from what I got from these AMAs, is they're basically saying like, listen, man, um, the value of them. I mean, they're they're the same as any other hero. They're the same as any other hero. Now, there was people that get drops because, um, you know, they they bought them early. They bought the founder things. They got the drops. They got them cheap. But I, I, from what I'm now, maybe I'm I'm reading too much into this. But from what I'm understanding, they're basically saying the next batch of heroes. They're gonna be. They should be worth just as much. They should be the same thing. It, the heroes are all the same. So I, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think the heroes, other than uh, collectibles, uh, what do you think the difference between like say wave one of the heroes, the founder heroes, and like from here on out wave two, wave three? What do you think uh, the main difference? Is? If they, you know, if a, if a, a healer is a healer, what's the difference? Why? What's the difference between having a founder he- hero and a wave two or wave four or wave five hero or healer? Sorry. I don't, I don't have any inside information, but I've been trying to read between the tea leaves. Uh, there's been several instances where uh, I'm kind of picking up on, I think there's going to be some sort of perk or maybe like a, a VIP experience. Perhaps a whitelist had popped in my head to where mm-hmm. I'm hearing this on Chromas and Founders, where... If you have certain assets that might open up uh, a special promotion for you okay. or maybe they're going to have like a side event that hey only chromas are getting into this or only founders can get into this event where maybe you get to do an extra quest that someone else can't do or something like that where they can keep all the stats the same and yes the next generation of legendaries will have similar stats or classes or, or whatever but you being a founder or a chroma holder, you might get some additional perks that might get you some really cool stuff that you could do whatever. Maybe use it in the game, maybe mm-hmm. put it on the open market. Who knows? Now, would that not fall into more of the pay to win aspect then? If you're buying, say, something with a better skin, you're now putting yourself in a different category than everybody else. So wouldn't that fall into more of the, the pay to win rather than the pay to pl- uh, sorry, free to play? Well, if it's a skin, not necessarily, but uh, uh, I think it was GOG Academy. We were on another podcast, and he he was talking about you know when we get this this point to where we can all raid together, mm-hmm. and we're all chilling, waiting for the raid to start, and you're sitting there and you're elite chroma, and you're like standing out amongst everybody. Right. It's gonna have that sexy appeal where everyone's right. gonna be sitting in their regulars, looking at you, saying, "Wow, that looks really awesome. I wish <laughs> I had that." And like I said last week. Human psychology, man. Yep. They want the shiny, pretty thing, and it always raises the value. No, 100%. 100% I, I totally agree. Someone sees something, they're like, I want that. I need that now, right? So I agree. Now, I want to talk about the, the raids a little bit more, <clears throat> or even just like the quests. So only common gear and common drops and all that's going to be uh, going in these dungeons, right? Uh, the only way to get rare or higher is uh, from uh, crafting the guild NFTs, right? Correct. So... Mm-hmm. Tell us. So here's the thing. What are your thoughts on that? So basically, so here's the thing. So if you're not in a guild, you can only get the common drops. You can't get anything else unless unless you buy it off the market. I guess right. Correct. Right. So you have to buy it off the market. Uh, the only way to make the money is by being in a guild. So what are your thoughts on only commons dropping in the dungeons? Uh, do you think there should be like a chance for a rare? You know, obviously a very slight, slight, very low chance of a legendary. What do we think on that? Like, do you think there should be more than just common, or do you think that's good? That's that's how it should be. It, personally, I'd like to see it. Um, I know they want to protect that whole guild dynamic mm-hmm. of getting people to get in the guild. They, it's almost like they're subtly trying to force people into it because it's it's a huge part of the game. Right. But that being said, there's always that that wow factor. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I've watched a stream of somebody uh, opening something or doing something and they get like a a crazy rare item and they just explode on right. stream of excitement and and that also even if you're not streaming that happens you to you 
while you're playing the game. And it, it just, it gives you that little incentive, like, oh, maybe I'll get something today. Mm -hmm. So yes, I would like to see that. But as of now, they're only dropping the common drops, but there is uh, a power rating system to these, which I wasn't aware of until this last AMA to where uh, the harder dungeons that you're doing, th like they gave an example of like, maybe you're uh, common to be a common one, but it can go up to like common five. Now they're not saying that it is specifically how it's going to work, but whatever, however hard of a tier you're dungeon doing, you have a better chance or you have a chance at getting a higher tier common item, which is kind of cool. Oh, neat. Okay. I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Um, now, okay. Now another thing I want to talk about is the legendary pets. As of now, there's no plans to be able to get not only legendary pets in the game, but I, from what I understand, any pet, right? There's no way to get any pet in the game right now. Uh, let alone legendary pets? Uh, there's a little confusion on this. Um, you will not be able to get founder pets ever again. Mm. Whatever founder pets there are, that's it. Got it. Done. In the future, they have said that they are not limited to any restrictions on adding more things. How that's going to look or how uh, potent those pets will be compared to these ones, we have no idea. No details on that whatsoever, but uh, this came up in a Twitter spaces about it because someone was saying that, uh, you know, they're it. No more pets. There's going to be a hard bottleneck on this. No, th th there's not. Uh, I've actually talked to the devs about this recently just to confirm. Mm -hmm. They're not set on any uh, hard limitations except for your warrior, legendary, and mythic guilds and uh, the uh, mythic chromas. So, as they said in the AMA, nothing set in stone here at GOG. Right. Well, that's, that's the thing, man. Like I was saying, if, if you can't, there's, there's, if you can't get pets in the game, there's not even near enough. Like these things are way undervalued by hundreds and hundreds of dollars. If that's the case, because there's just not enough, there's just not enough pets out there. If, especially if they're talking about 50 million users. Uh, I mean, there's not even near enough pets, not even one pet for everybody. So they have to, yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. way. It would go against their whole, we don't want to make this paid up a uh, win. Uh, exactly. Creed, because if, if, if you create that massive of a bottleneck, then those 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 prices are going to go through the roof, and only Absolutely. the people that have those are going to be able to have that massive advantage. Yeah, and, and that's why that's why I keep saying there's such a tr that tricky balance of you got to please the people coming in. You got to give them a chance. If, if if people are coming in the game and you're saying, well, we're not going to release any more pets, well, the people that are coming in the game, you know, today, tomorrow, a year from now, a year after release, well, you know. How are someone? How is someone coming in a year after release going to be able to compete with anybody or get any assets if you can't get it? You know, and, unless you get it now. I, I agree. I think I think they have. They have no choice. They have to add pets in the game. They have no choice. Um, now I want. Like, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go 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 for it. Go for it. I feel like they've got something up their sleeve. Um, uh, to be frank and honest, I don't know how this uh, this all looks like it's going to eventually go uh, get a win just just from the dynamic, mm -hmm. but have said repeatedly over and over again so they've really stuck their neck out that they don't want it to be that way so i think they got something up their sleeve mm -hmm. they're just not showing their hand because yeah. maybe they maybe they've got an idea maybe they've got some tech and they don't want to tip their hat and give it out to the the other games that are they're kind of competing with i mean we're all in this together we're all going to make it but at the right. end of the day there is a little competition and you can't just give away the farm so i kind of feel like They've got something. They just haven't uh, displayed it yet of how it's going to work. Yeah, I, I feel like there's still so much to learn. We don't know even – like, we think we know. We don't know. There's so much out there they're not telling us, and, and rightfully so. I mean, some things probably are just in the early stages. Some things are probably still on the drawing board. Some things maybe they want to keep secret and kind of release it later. There's there's so much more that we don't know, and we're going to be finding out the weeks and months to, to come, you know, for sure. Um, now, I want to talk about a thing called the, the scholarships or Sedalian uh, program, whatever you want to call it. Um, here's the thing. They said they, they have no um, interest, or I don't know if interest is the word, but they have no plans on basically getting involved with that. Basically, it's like if the community wants to do that, they can figure it out, do a third-party program, uh, and have it done. I, I don't. Okay, here's the thing. So I've been involved. I'm, I'm involved in another game where, you know, say I have a plot of land, and I can actually rent it out to somebody, and, and, and they could be my, my scholar or whatever, right? And okay. it's already automatically set up. It's safe. It's in the thing. You sign a contract through their site. It's all through the game, okay? So you sign. You say, okay, okay we're going to rent it to you for a month. Uh, it's automatically split 50-50. Whatever, you know, token they make, you know, I would get 50% of it. It's just that's the way it is, okay? So you don't have to do anything. There's no risk involved because it's all set in, in a contract. You can set it. You can sign them up for a week. You can sign them up for a month. You can sign them up for a year. You can sign them up for 100 years. Whatever you want. 
Um, but once that contract's over, oh. it automatically ends. You can renew it. So I think just for me, it's the peace of mind. It's um, the security of it. I think in something like this, it's I feel so much more secure when the game has a mechanic that that it's already intertwined with because there's no no funny business. Like if I'm in a Sedalian program, if I'm renting a land from somebody, they can't screw me out of it. I can't screw them out of it. It's all automatically done in the game. Whatever's made, 50% goes my way, 50% goes their way. There's no funny business. There's nothing involved. And I think for like uh, for this, I, th I think it's just a, a better, more secure. I think more um, you'd be more confident in it. You'd be more. I don't know how Axie does it. I'm not involved with Axie, but uh, I think I'd feel more you know confident myself if you know it was kind of all just kind of taken care of. And then you know, okay, I sign this person up for a month. If they're good, hey, well, let's resign it next week. You're not stressing about it. You're not worrying about it. It's just kind of like you do your thing. I don't know. Uh, what are your thoughts on the on the fact that they want nothing to do with the with the scholarship? I mean. I don't know. I've, the only one I've ever done, it was done for me. So that's all I know and I like it. Um, I don't know if you have any experience the other way or what your thoughts are on it. Uh, unfortunately, no. I don't have any uh, deep experience. I do know a little bit about the Axie program and how it works. I don't know it intimately, but basically you set up on the Ronin network and you're able to give out a QR code to your scholars. And through that QR code, they're able to use your assets but they cannot can't take your assets they can't take any resources that they farm it's a completely verbal contract and the managers have 100 percent control now the managers if they screw over their players that are farming them then players are going to get up and leave so it's kind of it kind of self-regulates itself uh, i don't know anything about the sedalian program that you're involved in but it sounds really cool i'm gonna have yeah. to learn about that I, I like how contract takes care of everything and it just it just works yep. now as far as uh Gil guild of guardians not being involved i my understanding is uh well no this is my my theory is they understand big players that are in this game like ygg blackpool mm -hmm. and several others and i can't see those big organizations not having something going already to facilitate mm -hmm. this where people can rent out things something along those lines how is that going to look i don't know i'm not i'm not privy or smart enough to know how to set that up or do it but I, i'm hoping i'm really hoping someone does do it because i, I have extra assets that i want to rent out and it's going to be a major major a uh, need in this community for people that get priced out and want to participate and advance in the game and i just think guild of guardians Maybe they're privy to some details. Again, maybe they're holding some stuff back that they've talked to these other companies already and they're relying on them to take care of it so that they can focus on the game and community economy mm -hmm. and focus their efforts there. But I totally get what you're saying about the security aspect and the, you know, you feel like you can trust it. So mm -hmm. yeah, we're going to be in that weird foggy area of like, okay, this third party's doing this. It's going to be legit or not. Me personally, I'll probably take baby steps. Maybe I'll rent out some rare heroes or something for a little while, see how it goes, see mm -hmm. how everything is, and just test the waters first. Yeah, that's probably the safest bet. You don't want to go all in, and then you know you know you never know what happens. Um, now, here's the thing: they were talking about um, one account per person. I think that's the way to go. I, I know I, I've personally, you know, people are maybe some people are upset by that. I don't know, but. Personally, I think one account per person is the way to go. Uh, you see these games where people have multi accounts, and it just—it's not. You know, I, I don't—I don't believe in that stuff. Have one account. You know, do your thing. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's how it should be because I think it would diminish the uh, energy booster prices and all this stuff. I think, I think uh, one account per person is, is, is fair. I mean, you know, I know people uh, might be seeing this as a job. I don't know. I don't know how it works. But another thing uh, too, um, before I get off tr off track with the Stallion program, so they have the. Um, they're also saying you'll be able to farm your way to the top, not to the top, but to get your legendary hero, right? So you're going to start with a free hero. Um, you're going to be able to get shards. And if you play free to play, you're going to be able to get these legendary heroes. So from what I understand, what they were saying is you can play your way through and without a problem, you don't technically need to buy a hero. You'll be able to just play it through and get to what you need to do. Like it's, it's, it's doable. Um, so again, how are some of these heroes worth a thousand dollars? I know it's, it's a pay to advance, but is it really worth that much? Is it really worth it? Or, or even a Sedalian program? Is it even worthwhile if you can just play the game and they're like, you don't even need to buy a hero. You can just go in, play your game. We're going to give you shards along the way. We're going to give you heroes along the way. We're going to give you whatever you need along the way, uh, whatever you need along the way and just have fun. 
what are, what are your thoughts then? What, why do we need a Sedalian program um, if, if they're saying you don't even need a hero? You don't even need to buy heroes. Boy. <laughs> Tough question. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> personally, I don't. Yeah, they could be technically right. Yes, you can join as a common, one common hero and work your way up to a legendary. I, I, I see that as taking a long time. And again, I, I'm going to fall back to, I don't know how they're going to get around the, the pay to win aspect unless they have something up their sleeve that they're not revealing that, or, or something drastic that we can't see because off what we know with traditional gaming and from what we've seen so far, this looks like it'll win. But again, they've said it repeatedly mm -hmm. that it's not going to be. So yes, you can get a comment and work your way up. It's going to take you a whole lot longer, in my opinion, than getting the assets now and as far as why are these assets worth worth so much right now right now it's just wild speculation and right. wild speculation in this space does that and they've checked a lot of quality boxes and they've done a lot of the right things and so a lot of people have faith in this project uh because of that and because this will be the first nft gaming uh platform where it looks like it's actually going to be fun to play and that Absolutely. has a lot of people excited because they don't want to play and feel like they're doing a job so you combine all those things together it's going to pump that price up because everybody's got their hopes up if they come through they're going to go even higher if it falls flat on its face and they got all kinds of problems which could happen you never know mm -hmm. prices are going to come down that's how i see it yeah so here's the thing man and, and i'm glad you said that about the fun to play because you know i have played you know axie um it's not a very fun game you know and it's not a shot at them it's not you know but it's like i don't enjoy i think the first few battles it was fun and then it got repetitive for me right so um that's the big key for me we've talked about uh, lost relics and all these other games that have come and it's just like it's not fun enough is it, the, the question i always ask myself is this game fun if, if there was if you took the pay to earn out of it you took the nfts the, all that stuff out of it and it was just a, a, a game okay would i want to play this game that's that's what it always comes down to and uh like i said lost relics no uh, all these other games no this is the first one for me that i think it has actually what it takes it's a it looks like a fun game looks the gr concept's great and everything even without the play to earn i think this is a game that would do well and I, I agree i think i i totally agree with you i totally agree with you on that and, and uh, i think the game is fun it's gonna be the first uh fun game do you think 50 million viewers or 50 million players do you think that's uh do you think that's a little wild? Do you think that's doable? Like that's a lot of people. We we talked Man, fifty thousand last week. We said fifty thousand. They said fifty million. <laughs> you know why everyone's laughing at me? <laughs> Jeez, I'm nuts. I, I just I'm trying to stay grounded and and just give people the perspective of how big it would be with just fifty thousand. So gr granted, I think it's gonna be a lot more than fifty thousand. So it's it's just a perspective of how big it would be with bottlenecks with just fifty thousand alone. Mm -hmm. So. I would be ecstatic with a million people. 50 million people, I think that's a couple of years down the road personally. For sure, for once sure. this gets out, once it gets out into the mainstream, if this is successful like we think it is, yeah. And they, they have said, too, you're going to start marketing. I don't know when or how. I'm crossing my fingers <laughs> for a Super Bowl commercial. That'd be Come wild. On, Nick, Derek, Super Bowl commercial. Get on it. There you go. There you go. I don't watch football anymore, but I will watch the Super Bowl just for the commercials alone because I watched it last year because uh, they, they they there was a lot of buzz with Elon Musk and everything with the Super Bowl last year. So mm -hmm. because of crypto, I will watch football for the commercials. So come on, I want to see that GOG Super Bowl commercials. Make wild. my day, man. Come on. That I, honestly, I mean, that would be an investment worthwhile. I would say you put you put a, a Super Bowl commercial. That's an investment worthwhile for sure. Um, 50 million. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of players. Yeah. But again, it's a mobile game. I think it's, you know, I don't know how many people play per game or what, I don't know the, the stats in different games and who plays what and whatever. I don't know those stats, but a ton. it's a ton. Yeah. It's yeah. Ton. I know there's a lot. I mean, like, you know, right. Everybody has a phone, right? So I know a lot of, mm -hmm. but 50 million is all, that's a big number. That's a, but Hey, I, I think, I hope so. I hope it, I hope it's a hundred million, you know, but uh, that's a lot of players. Holy cow. And, and again, now we're going to go back to the assets part of it. You know, when there's only 4,000 reborns or 5,000 reborns, they're talking 50 million people and only 5,000 reborn or I don't know how many there are in existence. They get 50 million people. There's a joke going around about a Cadmus y uh, yacht boat party. I heard about Somebody, it. Somebody's going to do it. That if 100%. 50 million people, someone will do it. It won't be me. 
I'm won't be <laughs> just calling it right. I'm gonna now. just. I'll wave to you guys from the shore. I'll wave to you guys. I don't have one of those. So I'll be waving to you guys. Hey guys, have fun. See you later. Have a good trip. You know, I'll be on the other. I'll be on my little my little sailboat beside you. My little paddle boat beside you. I'm like, hey guys, you know. <laughs> but no, that's crazy, man. It's uh, I, listen. Like I said, I hope it's fifty million. I hope it's a hundred million. I hope it's a, a, a billion. You know what I mean? I, you know. But uh, that's a big number. That's a big number. Um, okay, so all the guilds get the same rewards. Doesn't matter if you're an adventurers guild, a warriors guild, a mythic guild. That doesn't change. Every guild gets the same reward. Uh, I talked about this with you last week. What is the benefit of being in these mythic guilds? Um, you get a 10% tax. Um, you know, there's a, obviously a bigger pool. Um, or I don't know. I, and uh, and there's no benefit. I mean, which is, again, it's it's they don't want to be paid to win. Um, so these mythic guilds have a 10% tax. And you get the same drops as if you were in an adventurer's guild. So... Sell me on a mythic guild. Why? Why a mythic guild? Uh, if if I got a guess, I think you're gonna see these mythic guilds achieving harder uh, recipes quicker. They're still gonna have to farm probably a lot of materials, which the fifty people will come into play to help get there. I think uh, I think we'll see something where maybe they can raid a few times more than the the guilds below. And that'll give them a higher percentage chance to get the recipes faster. If you don't get the recipes, you're you're dead in the water until you can get the recipes. And then when you get the recipe, you gotta farm the necessary materials for it. And one of the cool things in the AMA that yeah, I think it was the AMA. No, no, this was on Schiller's. Um, they were talking about Nick was talking about whatever factions you go into the dungeons with that determines your drop table. I didn't know that that was news mm -hmm. to me. So whether you're going there with the empire glade or horde empire is the best, by the way, uh, <laughs> that will determine your drops from the loot table. So that's kind of interesting because it opens up a completely dynamic of strategy of like, okay, this dungeon is pretty hard for empire, but I, I need resources for right. empire. So you're going to have to pick and choose your battles because of the energy restrictions of, how am I going to go after these resources? And it's tough to use Empire. So it, it adds a completely mm -hmm. crazy dynamic, which is going to be fun to see how people strategize around it. Now, what if what if you use two Empire, two Horde, or whatever? Two Emp or sorry, two uh, yeah, two Empire, two Horde. How does that work? I, I'm assuming they the algorithms that they have in place are going to make it to where going there with two Empire, you have a 50 percent chance better to Got get it. those resources versus going in there with four where you have a hundred percent chance. Right, right, right. I don't know exactly how it's worked, but that's what I'm guessing. Right, 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 right. So, uh, okay. So I heard, I heard, okay. So I heard, uh, on one of the AMA, AMAs, the plan is they kind of basically want you to log in like three times a day. Right. right. Something like that, like three times a day. That's the plan. So basically from what I, now, again, I, I don't understand how it works. Maybe you know a little more than I do. Um, I guess, you know, basically what they're saying is your energy bar is going to deplete they're deplete. They're going to get, it's going to get empty. And then it'll take, you know, you can basically it'll get filled three different times a day for you to get on. So it'll fill up. You, or you go on in the morning, you play, you empty it. You could probably get on again in the afternoon. It'll be full again by then you get on, you play. And then, you know, maybe by like dinner time or something or bedtime, whatever, uh, it'll be full again. You get on, you play. Is that basically what, what, what they're basically saying? Or is, I, I don't like that's, you know, what, what's, how do you, how do they say three times a day? Like, I don't understand. They were talking about it. Um, I, I didn't really quite understand exactly how the dynamic was going to work, but I know they're big into uh, quality quality of life, and that's huge for me. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that they're thinking about that. It, I'm, I got I got three kids, a wife, a full time job, plus doing all these other shenanigans that mm -hmm. I do. For me to be able to play, have to play, you know, eight to twelve hours a day, it would just kill me. For sure. So I like it that they have limits onto how much you can play. Now, obviously, energy boosters, you get that once a day. It goes on a 24-hour cooldown, which we know about, and it reduces your energy tax on your heroes. Now, another dynamic that's going to come into play with, you know, facing loot tables with factions is every time you use a set of heroes, you're going to get taxed a little bit more. So uh, there's something I put on Twitter, uh, DRM squared. And what I mean by that is deep rosters matter. And deep roster management. So if you can figure out the combos that work best in certain dungeons here or here, you can 
have a deep enough roster to where, okay, I'm going to use this team only for this dungeon and then this team for this dungeon to where you are maximizing your energy to its fullest capacity. Now, you might get in some chances where, all right, I'm going to have to use this team twice because there's no way I can do this other dungeon. It's going to cost you that much more energy. So that's another strategy thing that they got going on. I, I love how they have all these different strategies come together where you're going to have to you're going to have to choose like which path do I want to take? And right. I think that's very exciting. Right. Absolutely. I, I absolutely, absolutely. So they I said, okay, your question there. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're good. You're good. You're good. So here's the thing. So they said, uh, the skill level required won't be very high. What are your thoughts on that? They said the skill level required won't be very high. So basically what I'm thinking, like to do the dungeon. So what I'm thinking, they're saying they basically want to mass. They want to get a lot of people playing. They want mass players in. So from what I understand, they said the skill level won't be, very high to play but i'm sure there's going to be the ones like the esports teams that are coming in that want to there's going to be the competitions too right because there's every guild you get like rewards or something if you're the top or, or whatever um but you know here's the thing i said the skill level won't be very high uh do you think they're going to have like different difficult i know they're going to have like the dungeons are going to be like you know this dungeon is obviously harder but like say could you do um dungeon one on like easy medium hard kind of thing you get more um resources if you do it on hard or whatever I heard anything about difficulty settings. Um, I did hear him say that, and I was kind of raising my eyebrow a bit on that as well. We don't know what, mm -hmm. what skill level is high is compared to. I mean, right? is it not high compared to the serious hardcore gamers, or is it, you know, not high compared to me, who's probably not very good at this game? <laughs> I don't know. You and me both. Uh, We're going to play together, you and me. We're going <laughs> to... So, I mean... It, it, it's tough to say because we don't have a, a working body to look at and see uh, how actual difficult it is. If it's super easy, I I think that could be a problem because you got to have some challenge. Of but course. Can't see them doing that. It just doesn't seem like something they would do. Again, more speculation here, mm -hmm. but I think they'll go a happy medium between difficult and too easy. That way it has some challenge, but not too challenging to keep people out to say i don't have a good answer on that one what about um what about so they also said that that dungeons are gonna take about two minutes to complete too short right too short too long shocked. too good i was shocked i was expecting like 15 to 20 minutes yeah. when they said two minutes i had to rewind it i rewound it like three or four times like did he stutter or like maybe two he minutes. forgot the zero after the two or something like i couldn't believe two minutes but that tells me that it's three times a day whatever they're talking about i think you're gonna be able to do Let's say dungeons with if you have a deep enough roster you can do eight dungeons cash out your energy knock out the eight dungeons take your resources home and then wait for the recharge mm. uh, i was shocked at first and i started thinking about it. it's like well that's kind of cool you know you're cycling through dungeons quick i mean and the oh the one cool thing oh pause button oh you yes. like baby yeah oh yes they said that i was like oh as yes <laughs> that is huge that is huge that is huge um i agree huge on the pause button um big plus on that the two minute dungeon seem a little low yeah, I, I agree i, I th how do you even like you can't even get your any momentum you're in a dungeon you're out of dungeon like if you're there now if you're there just to farm resources that's beautiful you're in you're out you know you love to hear that but for the actual gameplay that's that's short like, shocked. I, I was shocked yeah. at that one too. I was I was expecting fifteen minutes. 10, Agreed. 10 to fifteen minutes minimum. Yeah. I agree. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking at least 10, 15 minutes, which is good. You know, it's it's you know, like I said, that's where that's where the they don't want it to be challenging and the two minutes, I think that that where, where it's combined. Uh two minutes is low. Two minutes is low. It but makes me wonder that mm -hmm. makes me wonder how many dungeons there are. What if they got like a hundred dungeons? I mean, they may. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's uh that's that definitely seems a little bit on the low side um but again we're gonna learn more and more things as the weeks come and uh, the months come um what about price checks man do you want to talk about your price checks or anything or do, what, what do you want to what do you want to add to what do you want to say to it what do you want to flat the market's been kind of flat which is you know i'm not trying to brag but i kind of called it with all the excess liquidity that they mm -hmm. had in december i think people spent it bought back into the game I think we're just kind of in a holding pattern. There's been a few slight variations here and there, and I, I just I, I still stand by what I've been saying. It's probably going to go sideways for a while, and mm -hmm. we hit that hard date. I think it's going to launch again. And also, uh, I thought late quarter one we would be launching Alpha. Uh, I don't know if it was a misspeak or not on uh, 
Now was it Schiller? No, 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 no. It was uh that Reed. Uh, oh, the Twitter space one. Read something. <laughs> Gosh, I forget what the name of it. Read something. Nick Nick said uh, he got kind of led into a question by this the host. Host said, oh, we're going to see this Q2. And Nick said, yes. Then he followed it up with, well, we're really hoping to get it late quarter one. Nice. So I think we'll see it late quarter one. There's going to be a lot of when alphas yeah. still going on every yeah. day for a while. Unless they're, you know, maybe they – some major progression here soon to speed it up so i think that's still the timeline and i think once that hard date comes out we'll see a, a pump in price for sure um what do you think about that so i think for me i think it's like um like i said once they start advertising and stuff because here's the thing people when they come into a game they always look at the bottom right and they want to buy into the game they they for most people they look at okay i'm gonna just buy the cheapest heroes get myself in there whatever right so with the advertising coming out i think if, if super bowl would be massive you know how many eyes would bring into it people would be buying heroes the floor would go up you know all that stuff right um, but, uh, yeah, I think once the advertising and the, and the marketing starts coming out, like they say they were going to do, I, I think that the price is going to start moving again. Uh, right now, the ones that are invested, we're invested, we're already invested. So I feel like, um, that's why, you know, the prices are moving. They're kind of sitting, uh, once the marketing comes out, more eyes come in, more people want to invest, you know, things are going to move again. And then I agree with you with, with the, um, with the, with the date, once they start saying dates, you know, this and that, or you need this, or, uh, that's when, you know, there's gonna be more hype around the project, uh, more eyes on the project. There's gonna be more, you know, uh, influencers or whatever in there, uh, doing their thing and it's gonna bring more attention to it. And I think that's when you're going to see prices move again, because again, people are going to be buying in. So yeah, I think right now we're in a stage where the investors have invested, uh, for the most part, you know, I'm sure there's, there's more people coming in and out or whatever, but, uh, for the most part, I think people have invested. And then now we're kind of in that, like, kind of, you know, uh, what's next phase. And then when, whatever next happens, you're going to see some, uh, some movement again. I, I, I think, yeah, I think once the date and stuff comes out, absolutely. So have they said in how they want to market or anything, or they just said, Oh, we're gonna do some marketing, uh, no, no specifics, you know, nothing. Nothing to my knowledge. They have hinted that there's some major announcements coming soon. The, the sandbox, mm -hmm. the sandbox game, uh, giveaways for, if you got lucky and have the right ticket basically are coming soon. Uh, I don't know when they're going to announce that, but that should be coming. And I think they got a couple of other things, partnerships, maybe they're going to announce. We have no details on that whatsoever. And just pretty much waiting for uh, that hard date, which I think it'll be at least a good month or so before they give mm -hmm. a hard date. Maybe, maybe they'll let it out of the bag sooner and it's further off. We'll see. But uh, if they, it, it, I tell you right now, I'll, I'll say this right now. If they do a Super Bowl ad, I will dance live on uh, Twitch. <laughs> there you go. I'll dance live. Which, which dance do you do? The chicken dance, the macarena? What's your dance? What's your move? What do you do? I do. I do the. I'm a terrible dancer, white Irishman dance. <laughs> yeah, you got you got the moves, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't count on that. Right, right, right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'd love to see that. So there you go. Make sure we get that. I want to see that. I want to see that. I want to see that. I'll tell you. I'll twerk right here. I'll twerk right here. <laughs> I've never twerked a day in my life. <laughs> deal i don't uh, know how to twerk dude i i don't even me neither man trust <laughs> uh, so uh is there anything you want to add is there any final thoughts you want to say uh any questions you want to throw out there whatever what, what what what's on your mind what did you think about your boy reborn uh that you there's no merging on reborn that's kind of cool huh yes so there's no merging um i'm kind of just whatever about it I, again here's the thing so obviously if they merged there'd be less in circulation obviously rare but uh yeah i i, I kind of i'm okay with that i'm kind of okay with that uh to be honest i think it was it was different I, I think i don't know how that went i don't know how that whole sponsorship or partnership went i don't know what the relationship is with each other uh i'm still surprised that there's no uh energy uh esports team or guild or whatever and i'm surprised so i don't know if it was just kind of like a business deal see you later you shake hands you walk away or if there's something in the future i don't know but it just it, it seems like um i don't know it just seems like there's a separation there it doesn't i don't know that partnership i don't know there's thing about it um it's kind of just like okay we did our thing see you later bye and they don't look back I, I don't know maybe i'm wrong uh i was also hoping that you know if you got one of these heroes maybe you got uh, you know um you know you might get a giveaway with energy or something you know, you know nobody nobody deserves giveaways but it's always nice to get it you know and you think about it like that but maybe they you know because you you trusted it and you bought into their hero you're willing to you know sport their hero on on the battlefield uh here's a little you know something you know what i mean i don't know but uh yeah the no merging thing um interesting but i'm not surprised because it is like um uh what do you call it like a 
I don't know, not a collectible, but it's just kind of like a, a specialty thing. It's nothing. It's not really a. a it's just a specialty hero kind of thing. So I, I'm kind of uh, not surprised by it. What about you? Uh, yeah, I thought it was kind of interesting. I I wasn't expecting that. I thought everything could be merged, but uh, hero wise, and mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I guess it's just a niche energy thing, and that's where it's going to be. So hey, it, there, there's only five thousand of them. I mean, people were a little like heard about it and including myself i i thought i expected like 10 to twenty thousand of them to be 100%. out there but we got lucky and only five thousand so it's fine by me so do you, uh i don't know if you noticed uh they had uh oh gosh i'm gonna butcher her name uh alia kalia i believe she's gonna be the uh content and social media manager mm -hmm. and that was like the first time we got to hear from her uh, from my understanding and then also uh holly howie i don't know his last name or he just came on recently within the last couple months. He's going to be the, or he is the game economy dev. I was kind of, this I kind of perked up my ears. He used to work for uh, Quant Stock Exchange and, and trade and finance. And oh, well. that's kind of cool that they're getting somebody from traditional finance that's coming over to do this. That that was like, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, it's. I'm noticing a. I'm noticing a lot of either the the the, the people that are you know making these play to earn games or people. A lot of them are coming from the stock exchange, and I think that's that's they have that that expertise and that knowledge. Um, obviously, there's some differences and variations to it, but I mean, you think about it. You could almost look at it as it's very similar. You know, crypto is basically stocks in, in a certain way. If you want to look at it a certain way, uh, but yeah, so there's definitely that experience in the in the market uh, coming over to the crypto. I think that's a huge advantage. It's nice to have uh, people like that on the squad. You know, for sure. I think that's a great thing. Yeah. That's a great thing. Another quick tidbit uh, that I was pleasantly surprised about. I, I think I heard it correct. I was worried because I keep most of my assets uh, tied to a ledger for security purposes, mm -hmm. and I was wondering how am I going to do this on a phone? Because like you can't hook up right. a ledger to a phone. They said that you're going to be able to create an account and play it with just a basic email and password. And I, yeah. I didn't think that was going to happen. So I was super happy to hear yeah. that because I don't want, I, I want to keep my assets protected. So right. however they do it to where you can just use an email log, uh, email and password. Uh, right. Big, big, big fan of that. Yeah. It'd probably just be like a two factor, uh, authentication email. Uh, absolutely. No, I think that's great. And again, it's, it's another way to mask, get these mass players on. It's, it's very basic. Uh, email uh, to log in. It's it's the thing that uh, here's the thing. Here's the thing that I feel like a lot of people get scared is when you got to start making wallets and start transferring funds and you got to bridge this and you got to do that. That's where the I'm gonna say re, you know regular uh, folk they get turned away. It's because they're like, well, I'm confused. I don't know what this is. This wallet. Why do I need a wallet? Why do I need eight wallets? What's this wallet? What is a MetaMask? What is this? So I think See they just phrase right. Yeah, exactly. See if what's this free? <laughs> they lose it, you know. So I think that's what it really turns a lot of people away from the crypto stuff. Once it's as basic as yo, know, you just need an email, a password, or what? That's beautiful. That's like okay. That's what I need. That's what I need to get in. Just an email. Perfect. I'm playing. When you start going to, you know, you got to connect this and create this and get a seed phrase here. And the people are like, I'm lost. That's too much. Either one, it's too much work or two, I'm confused. And they get, they shy away because they're scared because it's, you know, you're dealing with money. So, uh, yeah, I agree. I think a basic email password. I think that's great. I think that's, that's perfect. And that's going to help mass adopt this game into the, into the, into the world. I, I, I think it's, uh, the way to go for sure. For sure. For sure. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, okay. So is there anything else you want to add, my friend? This was great. I always love chatting with you, man. This, this, so my boy WT is, he's so knowledgeable, man. This, this guy is so knowledgeable and, uh, and, uh, it's, I'll tell you, it's always fun chatting with you. I want to, you know, we're going to be doing this, um, often. I mean, I, I, I think we're doing every week or something. Maybe we'll even come up with a little name or something. You know what I mean? We'll figure something out. Yeah. So we're going to be doing this very, very often most likely weekly. Um, you know, obviously there's not, when, when nothing's coming out, it's a little bit harder to talk about things, but we're going to try to keep you up to date with everything. We're going to discuss things. Um, you know, WT knows all the information. I'm more on like a gamer side of it. I like the, the gaming. He's the, he's the inf inf informant. He's the guy, he's the knowledge, he's the encyclopedia <laughs> and uh, he's great at it. He's such a good guy too. So, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was fun. Like we were saying the other, uh, we were saying the beginning of this, uh, the, the podcast that, uh, you know, it was fun playing games with you. We, we've been playing this game called Goose Goose Duck. Anyway, it's a, it's a game we've been playing on stream. Stream and it's uh it was really fun, fun man yeah that was, very fun. Fun. that was my first time and then uh my i i'm gonna i'm clean here i brought my wife down for that match of the uh jackbox yeah 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 
she's awesome at trivia, so that's why I won that second game. <laughs> I, I thought something was up, man. I'm like, wait a minute. He's not that. I'm just joking. <laughs> He's not that smart. No, I'm just teasing you. Uh, no, but yeah, uh, that was fun, man. So we do Jackbox like trivia stuff. And uh, again, if you, if uh, for anybody watching this right now, if you, uh, if you want to get to know the Gilded Guardians community, you're gonna see a bunch of people in there. We got, you know, the um, the main people in uh, in uh, O Canada A come in, and we got you know GOG Academy and a bunch of people come in. Uh, it's a good way. We got my you know, Bal and, and Face. We got a bunch of people in there that, that are in the in the community. Uh, very, very a good group. If you ever want to get to know and just chat with us, man, we're there. You know, you can chat and talk about whatever you want. So, uh, my friend, I think that's uh, it for today. But that was really fun. I always love chatting. You're so you know your stuff. Um, I threw some uh, curveballs at you, some you know some tough ones. But you, you're 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 cool under pressure, man. <laughs> I'm gonna get one that gets you. I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna find one. That's gonna be you're gonna be like, oh, uh, I'm gonna find you one day. I'm gonna find one one day. It I'm not, I'm not that intelligent, trust me. I just, nah, I, uh, I have a, I have fun doing this, so it's easy for me to absorb this stuff. Yeah, and as you guys know, I'm super, super excited about this game. I have picked up a few more heroes and pets and stuff, and I'm slowly building the roster. Um, I got to make it a deeper roster. I have to right now. You know, I'm, I'm not there yet, but we're, we're slowly working our way. And, uh, you know, we talked about it earlier where the deeper roster I think is going to be important. And, um, yeah, I got I to gotta build mine up. I really got to build it up. So, uh Thank you again, man. Let's, uh, I mean, we're going to be doing this again next week. And um, yeah, any closing statements? I look for it. Thanks for the opportunity. I love your energy. And if you guys haven't seen him on Twitch, check him out. It's a lot of fun. And man, let's, let's 2022 GOG go. Let's go. Let's go, baby. All right. You're a bunch of beauties. I'm out of here. We'll see you next week. Uh, like you said, come by the Twitch stream. You can chat with us. We're always talking GOG, whatever, man. Uh, you know, we just have a good time. We have good vibes in there. So come on by. Come get to know us a little bit. And uh, it's always good to see you guys. I'm out of here. Peace.